What's up everybody, so check it out. Finally got the auction over with, and I gotta tell you, having uh, 28 vehicles going on the auction block in one single day was crazy and chaotic, and it took about three weeks to make it all happen, and then a week to do the auction, but we sold over a million dollars worth of cars, and uh, as promised, uh, these cars are leaving, and new cars are coming in, and I'm gonna show you a little bit of something that I've been up to, so off to Chicago. Airport. It's super early, not even eight o'clock in the morning yet, but we're on our way out to uh, Chicago. Uh, I don't want to tell you everything right now, but I'm buying a really, really iconic hot rod that came from Dallas, Texas. I actually heard about it when I was a kid and always wanted to know where it was. And it turned out that I found it in 2011 and I got it bought. I was really excited. And then Discovery called and said I had a TV show. So I had to sell it because I needed the money. Uh, and now it's resurfaced up in Chicago. We're gonna go up there and uh, we're trading something for it. So we're not actually peeling off any cash, but this thing is the shit. And it's got a killer story and it's all about Dallas and hot rodding in the early 70s. So get you some of that. Don't make fun of my Merce. This is all I'm carrying. It has my iPad in it and uh, maybe a couple Miller lights. We're in Chicago. I'm nice and comfortable in the front seat of our uh, chauffeured suburban thing. And uh, the millennial here behind the camera wanted me to tell you a little bit more about what's going down. We're headed to uh, some suburb of, of Chicago and we're going to be uh, literally trying to make a trade. Uh, one of my most treasured cars is the 32 Ford 3 window uh, that I have. Um, and. Uh, but this guy has a car that I used to have uh, and I had to sell it so that I could make a TV show called Fast and Loud and uh, now uh, I'm trying to get it back because this is a car that has a lot of history in Texas and in Dallas in particular in Hot Rod Alley where we're at and uh, it's pretty interesting and it's uh, also pretty bitching so what we're going to do is um, go down the road here a piece we're going to stop at a store get some beer and maybe a sandwich and then we're gonna go do this deal. And then we're gonna try to get back to Chicago. I need a Chicago dog, I need a deep dish pizza, and I need a, uh, a beef sandwich. Because those are all the things you have to do when you're in Chicago. Is this car that we're picking up street, like street legal? It is street legal. It's tagged and titled in Texas. Uh, the guy that uh, built it, Mike Manette, is uh, somewhat of a wizard, little mechanical genius dude. Uh, and uh, has just always lived in the same place, uh, right across the street from uh, our old shop. I want this car back in the neighborhood. I want it back together the way that it was in the early 70s. Do you remember how much you paid for it back in the day? I want to say I paid 25 grand. How much did you sell it for? Whenever? I think more or less the same. I just, they called me and said we got the TV show and I needed the money. I mean, we didn't have any money, so. Um, I think I, I, I will get the real story from Chris because Chris doesn't drink that much, uh, so he'll probably remember. But I've had a few <laughs> I've had a few beers in the last twelve years. So, like, since you're trading uh, your three window for it, what's kind of like the monetary value that's kind of being exchanged here? I think the the early Ford stuff's kind of dropped off a bit, so I think this is probably a fifty-five or sixty thousand dollar deal is where I pin it and um, I think that once I get the car back and we complete the car and we get it back on the road then I'll have the upper hand in the deal but right now definitely I'm getting a slap in the face. My plan is to drive it around Dallas and raise total hell just like Mike Manette did back in the early 70s. I mean this is this thing's so crazy and street legal that people were like calling the cops on him while he's going down the road saying there's a, some crazy dude driving on the freeway and uh so uh you know that's that's my plan 
I'm not gonna find a Brahms up here. We are in hell. Sean said he's got a warm 30 pack behind him. A warm. <laughs> That's about all he's got. He's gonna look and see if he uh, is passing one and stop in and get diesel and get beer. How do you feel about a warm 30 pack? When when you're uh, forced with the uh, ideology of having warm beer or no beer, I say warm beer every time. Let there be, I could let call there it be beer. Cranked AC. We we call it. Uh, Rodeo beer in Texas. That's when it's been rolling around in your ice bucket in the back, sitting in the back of your truck, a couple of days. And it has like pictures and stuff on the door. What's up, man? <laughs> well, I need some, uh, some beer and some food, please. So we popped into uh, the only place within like four or five miles, which is a very large area when you're looking on the GPS, that's called the pub. And uh, they have uh, bratwurst, and turkey clubs, and hamburgers, and what have you. But most importantly, so getting geared up to do our deal. And uh, I'm gonna get my energy up, be ready to rock. Here in a minute, we're just gonna cram this. Oh yeah, it'll stay colder in here. Fresh right. from Dallas. Fresh from Dallas. Oh, it's cold. Yes, It'll keep it cold in here though, not in the car. <laughs> What's up, Sean? Ran, ran the AC. What are they going to do with the truck the trailer here? I don't know. Steal it because you know that car that's in there is awesome as hell. All right. In the words of MC Hammer, let's turn this mother out. Our flight's at 650. What time do we need to Departs walk? Departs at 647. Yeah. We have to be there like 430 or something. 430? Yeah, it's up here. That's ridiculous. 30 minutes is one thing, three hours is something different. He's got a lot of cool cars up here too, so we gotta watch those. And he might still have the cockroach, which I actually sold to him a long time ago. What uh, is the cockroach? The cockroach is a really famous uh, magazine car from the uh, 50s. So we're here, let's go see what the digger looks like. Hey, is that a horse? What's up, Chris? Hey, how you doing? Long time to see you, man. Has it been like seven or eight years, maybe? Maybe 10. Maybe 10? Wow. Yeah. This is yeah. Chase. Hey, Chase. Yeah, nice to meet you. And I think you've see met you Sean before, but I'm not sure. It's been a minute. Yeah, how you doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you live here? No, uh, I just I just went to a shop. I live in town. Well, how far is town? Because it seems like it's a bazillion miles. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, when I first moved out here, I, um, I was in an industrial complex. Okay. And there was a, you know, everything was on videotape, but there was a Honda Accord that came in there and it broke into five units. And that, that just kind of freaked me out because, you know, insurance is one thing, but there's a lot of stuff you just can't replace. You can't replace history and you're yeah. a history buff. That's what I was telling uh, the, the crew on the way here. I was like, your attention to detail and history and not messing with what was made is what, you know, is, is oh, really thanks. cool. Because a lot of people just collect stuff to collect stuff, and you collect stuff to collect history. Yeah. Which I think is really cool. Oh, thanks. So let's go in. So, oh, man. So Do you I still have the cockroach? Hug, right? No. Uh -uh. You don't have the cockroach no, anywhere? I wish I did. Here, please, sir. It's your yeah, place. All right, I'm a guest. I'll go in first. I'll go in. What? You never know. So this is the latest one I've farting around with. <laughs> so. What is this? What motor's in it? Well, I changed it out. It's a, well, it's it's a bug out of It's an old race car that's been sitting for almost, uh, well, over 25 years, but this is what I put in it. Hey. Wow. But it had a, uh, it had, you know, a 283 was set up with a torque flight, near what Chrysler rear end, and it was built in the 60s. I mean, it's really cool. See, I want to make a couple of little shapes around there to kind of emulate the headlamps. Yeah. This, this is kind of the thing that I've got going on here. Wow. Yeah, that's rad. Yeah, it's, um, you know, I think what stock there, 1,500 pounds. I think this is still going to be under 2,000 pounds. So I'll tell you what you guys don't know is, is Chris here is also a, uh, an amazing designer, uh, fabricator, worker. I mean, he does it all, uh, start to finish. And uh, he's owned or had or restored some of the most impressive cars in the world, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, this is really cool. Look at this three window. 
What's the history on that? So this is, um, I first saw this car when I was 15 years old, believe it or not. Uh -huh. And it was on the cover of Street Rider magazine. So there's a, there's a couple magazines that I kept and, and I kept this magazine for a number of years and then 25 years later I found it. Wow. And then um, in 2010, at the Grand National Roaster Show, they had the significant cover cars for Street Rider. And that's the, they made a big metal sign there as I was on the cover. So they actually transported it over there with me. So this was at the Grand National Roaster Show, but I tried to backdate it as much as I could to make it look just like the cover car. In fact, I even, those tires that are on the cover, I had them mounted on the, on the car on display. They're, they're back here, I'll, I'll show you. That's awesome. That is rad. Look at that. This is uh, just flat floor channeled down. Oh, yeah. See, you can drive a car like that. I, yeah, yeah, as tall as I am, I can't get it. I'd, I'd be all beat up in there. But you got the, the three window dash. Oh yeah. With the glove box. Yeah. I remember when I used to be able to, you know, I'd find a three window dash with the glove box and the cigar lighter. You know, those things were worth four or five grand. Cigar lighter, yeah. 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 Look at that. Well, you know this car though, right? You know this car? Tell me again. So. This car was in the movie Rebel Without a Pause. Was it? Yeah, so here's the, right. the, the party scene there. So, you know, right when they're, right after the chicken race scene, this is the first car that, that leaves the, the show. So anyway, when we have some time, you know, I know That's you're probably cool. gonna edit this, but I actually uh, tracked down the original owner and builder, and I took this car to him 60 years after he sold it. And, um, I sat down, talked to him, and he said, hey, you wanna, you wanna know what color the engine was? I said, yeah, sure, and he takes out this book. So in the 50s, he actually had color photos. Yeah. You know, and then, so he's going through all this stuff. Well, he's an ex-Art Center graduate, too. I mean, it's crazy. Well, then I gave him a ride in it, and at the end of the afternoon, he said, you know what? He goes, this car and you deserve this book more than I do, and he gave me, I'll show, I gotta show you the book. That's all original awesome. build photos. And so, uh, that's uh, chills, bro. Nah, that's that's actually cool. a good story. Here, here he is, right here. That's the, that's awesome. Yeah, really nice one. But I mean, that's a lot of work. I mean, there's a lot of there's a you, you know as well as I do. There's a lot of curves and angles and everything. That is a lot of work. Well, you know, and everyone says no one, you know, never chop a forty because they always look funny. And that a lot of times they do. Good. This one, they did a hell of a job because they... Uh, it all flows. Well, what he did, he actually took this stock pipe back window. They didn't yeah. chop it and, and, he, and he pulled sure. it back. They that's pulled why. pulled it back because that's why. Yeah. yeah. No, that is one second. So long. I traded the cockroach for this. And then really? It, and it gave me a bunch of parts and stuff like that, too. So, it's, uh, so what's the story on this one? Well, it didn't have the provenance. It was just, you know, it was one of those things where, um, you know, I hadn't planned on selling the cockroach at all. I loved the car. The car was awesome. It was awesome. But you know, I like driving the cars. And I just, you know, I had, uh, like, I, I broke one of the suspension pieces and I didn't want to damage the paint. And then I thought, well, and my wife likes, you know, 40s and stuff like that. And so, but I thought, you know, if I ever get a, find a Merc, I'd want to chop and channel one, which I figured I'd never find one. And then this came up and he only wanted to trade. He didn't want to sell, he just wanted to trade. So I sent a picture and he goes, oh, I know the car. And so he said, I, I think your roadster is worth more than the car is. So we worked out a deal. He gave me a bunch of parts and stuff. So, but I, you know, I drive this all over the place. I feel like I'm standing on digger interior. Yeah, it's digger interior. Let's get to the freaking good part. <laughs> I mean, not that these are not good. Look at this. What? So I tell you, Richard, this is a, uh, this is a bittersweet moment for me. Chris, really? I did not want to sell this car either, but I, I got the call, like literally like a month after I found the car, and I got it bought, and you even came by the shop, I think, yeah, at one point. I did. And we were talking about it, and I'm like, no, I'm never gonna sell it, I'm gonna do this and that. And I didn't have any choice. I had to make the TV show. And, uh, you know, they asked me on the way back, or the way here, um, I think that I think, did I think 20 or 25 and I just sold it to you for the same? What was 25 it? 25 grand. Yeah. That's what I thought. And I needed that 25 grand so bad that I had to sell the car and I did not want to sell it. I mean, well, you this know, is, you know, it's so it's, crazy because Aaron knew that I was looking for the car. And then when you called me 
And then, you know, I know you had plans, you know, you're kind of trying to get sponsors and all that and, you know, build it up. And then at the time, in fact, I got to show you the sketch. I don't think you ever saw the sketch, but you're going to rebuild it. And then, you know, and then I said, hey, I'd like to be involved if, if you're going to yeah, do I remember a, that. If you're going to do a paint scheme. And then so, I don't think, I don't think you ever saw yeah, you, this. Yeah, you drew for Ed for us. Yeah. That's right. But I did a, you know, like infinity line. And so this is the sketch I was doing when you still owned it, when you were talking about building it. I said, well, you know, so I was just kind of screwing around with some paint schemes, you know. Yeah, because everybody can draw like that. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't draw then, if you gave me crayons. And then after I got, so this is, well, this is 2011. So this is, you know, this is before I had it. This is when you still owned it. And then later, I was gonna, you know, I've got like that Pro Street drag bike there. After I, after I got this, I wanted to build a trailer and then tow the black uh, VMAX behind it. <laughs> Heck yeah. So, anyway. so show, show them that picture. So uh, you guys might remember back when we did the build off back early 2012 or 13. Uh, I found these. Yeah. Chris uh, actually drew, uh, drew the drawings for Fred for us and uh what have you so these are some of the early drawings it yeah. it turned out pretty close to that but uh fred well, is the, the acronym renders. for uh fucking ride every day and oh uh, is that what it stood for yeah i do <laughs> well the bike was called fred yeah. uh yeah. when we bought it because it was right across the windshield it still hangs in my uh, merchandise shop and i guess that was the guy's name or something like that but but uh phipps was the one that came up with oh, the acronym yeah. That's fucking good. ride every day <laughs> and uh and uh what have you but i've been trying to buy that bike back forever and the guy just doesn't want to sell it oh, really? so if you're watching this right now dude that owns that bike i want that <laughs> okay this is too cool get you some of that chase it's fucking cool <laughs> it's but it looks a lot different than when you uh, last saw it yeah, right. yeah, that yeah, was yeah. Yellow. It was beat up, and yeah. they had painted on it, and it didn't have a motor, yeah. and it had that big uh, box. Yeah. Now you were telling me that you took the box off, yeah, and mounted a scoop kind of underneath. Do you think that's going to be enough to cool this off? Or I mean, that was my theory. I mean, it's... <laughs> is this the ins and outs of the radiator? Yeah, yeah. I don't there's, think there's that. Oh, that's two here. Well, they go in each head, see. Oh, okay. And then there's another one that comes out of the water pump. Wow. I've, got, I've got copies of the receipts, you know, Centennial Radiator, this is all oh, custom no, built. Centennial's and, great, so, we've used them forever. Yeah. And then see the, uh, so he built all the so, flanges and then the, the fuel tank. I mean, it looks rough, but then I had them, you know, they dipped it. So it's it. all, it's all yeah. done. Yeah, and I haven't had any fuel in it at all. So Chase, if you're going to be working on this, I, I, I sent Richard a picture, but I had some mice problems over the winter. Oh, wow, okay. In fact, I've seen I, from the floorboards. Oh, oh here's just recently? Yeah. Here's I thought that picture like, was a long time no, ago. No, no. Oh, okay. When I took the cover off, I thought, you know, I, found, I saw some you mouse tricks here. You see the carpet you were right. standing on over there, that there was an issue? <laughs> well, we know issues. And then uh, I took the, the hat off. Right. And there's a, a mouse nest. I mean, it's just packed full, because there was Holy a church yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but feel yeah. how stiff this is. I, I know, I, heard, I know. I was trying to open it. I'm like, what the hell? I know. I don't know how those things got in there, but it was packed full. I sent I sent Richard a picture. Wow, that's it's funny. So you said you had uh, Aaron make you a couple of these? Yeah, or two or three, uh, five, I think. I think it was five of them. So these aren't beat all the way in yet. Well, yeah, I mean that one I need to just kind of ream a little bit, but they're uh, I, think, I don't know why this one's just a little tight. I don't know if that pipe no, is fine. fine. But anyway, they're all they're all good to go. These are. I don't have yeah. set screws in there. I'm not okay, sure no. that we don't need to build a new set though and have them chrome. I don't know, but they need to look the same. Well, yeah, they, can build what were set. these holes for? Those are for the heat shields, and I've got oh, the original yeah, pads. You've got those heat shields. Yeah, wow. yeah. I, I'll, I'll get them. I'll show you. You know, he had these sit in there, and so I can't I, even see how those would do any good. Well, maybe some. Because well, I, just I heard that this car paint. got driven up to Oklahoma, it pulled yeah. a trailer. I heard that it pulled a trailer at one time to Oklahoma. He had, uh, I've got pictures of it in Oklahoma, and the, he had a trailer for his slicks, and he drove over there with truck tires. He had a real tall, like 16-inch yeah. truck tires or something like that on it. Wow. You know, like heavy-duty uh, one-time truck tires. So how's the cockpit open? 
Oh, it just split. It should have split. So like this. this is crazy because you're sitting over the rear end. I gotta get in this thing. Look, the steering wheel moves oh. with it. Cool. And it right. still has the uh, Street Rod Nationals. That's Tulsa, so that's proof right there. Huh. Isn't that funny? AM, FM radio. <laughs> Silly, yeah. <laughs> Where are the speakers? <laughs> they were back here. Holy cow. Yeah. Look at that. And see, Manette was smaller than me, too. Yeah. We're about the same height. You know, I talked to Manette on the phone, but I never met him before until after I got it. And we are the exact same height, so I mean, I, I feel like you love in it. I'm in here. Let's just pull Yeah, there in. might be some room to oh, move this you, around. You want it down? Bit. Yeah, go up and down. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. It's just about go way back. My head will hit the roll bar. The, uh, maybe roll we can bar. modify the roll bar or something. Yeah, we can. Yeah, we maybe will scoot it back this a little bit. So freaking rad. That's nuts. <laughs> you were in that thing. Is this the coolest thing ever? This is pretty fucking cool. I gotta get. So it. basically, yeah. Chase, make it to where you fit in it. Uh, right. And it'll, fit and perfect. it'll fit perfect. Right. It's got windshield wipers on this thing. I know. Who's driving this in the rain? Yeah. No one. <laughs> you know what it was? Is because he was pissed off at the DPS. And they wouldn't approve any of his crazy contraptions. Yeah. So he just did every single thing he had to do and took it down to DPS and they couldn't turn him down. Yeah. They couldn't tell him no that he can't have a title. And uh, it had wipers, you know, it, it had air, reverse lights, front lights, everything it had to have. And he goes, Yeah, give me my title, fools. <laughs> See this torsion bar? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if you can. Well, there's a, when you take it apart, you'll see, oh, right here, you might be able to see it. But where the torsion bar next into the, you know, it's kind of a hex shape. Yeah, yeah. It's a craftsman socket that he, that he welded on. Really? Yeah, just because it fit into the hex. Wow. It's funny. Are we, are we single carb, are we single carb under here or, or what? Or two? Yeah, single, single four barrel? Big four barrel. Yeah. It's insane. <laughs> That's cool. But you know what's cool about it, what, when you take this apart, so the way Mike did this, so like the, you know, they, they, they call this shower head injector, mm -hmm. right? So these actually feed into the actual line that goes to the carburetor. Really? And the linkage, there's a bell crank underneath here that's hooked to the carburetor. I mean, wow. it's, it's extremely complicated. So it's, it's really, it's, it opens when you nail it. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Look at that. Isn't that a great shot? Yeah, I've seen a that black and white to this. <laughs> that is just awesome. Look at that. So the rear wheels are different. Yeah, that's one, you know. What do you think those wheels are? Those are American Bear Paws, 16 by 13. And the guy you bought it from, Bob, I called him about it. He said, you know, he said, well, I, mean, I didn't like the looks of it, so I sold them. And, and we need to find a set of those. Well, they're available. They're kind of expensive, but those, that's what makes them. And see, these are only yeah, 15s. Yeah, those Bear Paws are cool. Oh, they're, they're awesome. And these are 15s? These are only 15s. Yeah. So these are the same rims that um, are on it that, you know, when I bought it from you. But the 16 by 13s, I mean, that's, that's it right there. And then, you know, you can get DOT tires now in the, in the 16. <laughs> so cool. Chase, look at this. <laughs> that's insane. These are bear claws, he says, American Racing. 16 uh, inches. There's 13s right now. Yeah, 16. Mm -hmm. This is nuts. Well, I guess we got to drag out uh, the 32 and see if you even like it. Hopefully you don't. I think I have a hard back of this. <laughs> you got some cool stuff in here. That's pretty cool that this was in Rebel Without a Cause. That's pretty cool. Really cool. I got to show you some uh, photos of this thing. Cool. So, uh, Chris, this is uh, what I brought to trade. And I guess we've talked about it enough on the phone. But it's a, a three window late 60s early 70s style um we went all through it on the show with uh brian bass was on the show with us so he kind of helped us uh accumulate some of the parts but this is a nice car um it's probably not as period correct as you would normally like because it's it's a little bit of 70 little 80 little uh -huh. little uh 90s and 2000s it's got ac and a killer seat 
it, it literally looked like this. Uh, it had it had tweed interior uh -huh. and uh, like uh, Keystone wheels, oh, Keystone, and, okay. or something like that. Okay. So we just knocked the the '80s off of it, so to speak, okay. and kind of put it back to where we're at now. Uh, but um, real strong little small block, three deuces, AC, blows cold. Now is that a new, different engine or the same engine that was in it? We went through it. Same oh, you engine. Did? Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. we went through it. Uh, 61 or Impala steering wheel, I believe. Um, it's a trunk, you know, like I said, it's got a few spider webs like that here and there on the old one stage. Is this a Jenny body or is it a Brookville? No, it's Jenny. Is it? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Now, how do you open the trunk? Uh, there's a lever on this side, oh, okay. I believe. Uh, rack it on out, bro. Now, Chris, I sold you the digger for 25 grand, right? Uh huh. So this is a big trade up because this car is obviously worth. What do you think this car's worth in today's let me, market? Let me, I got to see it, but I mean, 32-3 window, Jenny. That's what, what I think. What were you asking for? They're yeah. down a little bit. This car used to be worth 80. Yeah. It's down yeah. a little right now. But you know, the part of the value of a vehicle is the provenance, right? Correct. You know, so what they made 200,000 three windows. I don't know how many survive you know there's some drug deals out there there's only one of these there it is you know and it's a and it's a it's a it's a dallas icon so it's a, but this is a great great little car and uh oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can you can drive this car i drive this car i don't see the hot rods that we have because you know they're always dead the battery out of gas flat tire whatever oh, i'd literally drive this car back to dallas oh. It's really? nice. Yeah, I know. This is nice cold. You put the AC in it? Nope. It had it. We just reverbed everything oh. and got the smaller uh, condenser and all that kind of stuff. You want to go driving through a cornfield real fast? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, can I take it for a spin? Yeah, I mean, go for it. I mean, yeah, I want to. Yeah. All right, let's go. This is it, huh? Yeah, but uh, show Richard your car. This oh, is uh, a <laughs> good look at it. <laughs> this thing is super cool. He actually, uh, when I the first time I saw this, he had Rochester fuel injection on it. It was just yeah, so cool. It's an old 50s hot rod. How long you had it? So about 25 years. That's cool. So this original metal. Oh yeah, yeah, it's never been touched. Yeah. Never had a patch panel. No, huh? no, no. That's no, awesome. Dance or anything. Uh, no. You want if you keep the car, it'd be sixty-five. No, I didn't say sixty-five. Oh, what'd you say? I said we thought this was worth around sixty in today's market because it's a little low. So, how about fifty? <laughs> oh, I thought you said sixty. <laughs> See, there you go thinking again. <laughs> You're retired, sir. You don't have yeah. to think anymore. But well, well, what do you think? Well, so you remember a couple of years ago when you, you made me an offer that was actually quite a bit higher than that initially. I know, and I couldn't get it done because then COVID hit and everything went to shit. So sell me the digger, give me a price. I'll take this car home, I'll keep it. And I want to take the digger back to Dallas where it belongs. you be willing well I started at 50 I can't cut my own throat that's yeah. double what you paid for but you did put a lot well, of work into it and you built the it, motor yeah at least, you know yeah I mean it's it looks quite a bit different 55 Chris uh, what do you think Tim I haven't taught him the secret 32 Ford handshake yet yeah. <laughs> he doesn't know it and before he can buy a three window he has to know the three window handshake so I, I can't I can't advise you until you learn that. Okay. <laughs> wait, wait, so what is it? 55. That's yeah. yeah, that's more like it. It's up to you. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. 
I'd buy every 32 Ford in the country if I had, could afford them. I have a lot more. I, I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> I have plenty more, sir. <laughs> I have a lot. I tell you what you'd like to have is uh, Byron Crumps. I got Goldie, that gold one. Oh yeah. That Byron Crump bought yeah. built with his. Yeah, dad. I like full fender cars. I know yeah. I know Byron's. But car. that's a great car. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you've had that for a while. I have. Well, I tried to buy it for ten years before I finally got it bought. And did it take that long? Oh yeah, shit. It really did. I tried to buy it the day they brought it out. <laughs> I was like I just waited forever. I ended up buying three cars through the package from kept that one. All right, so what's the dealio, Coolio? <laughs> it's not what I expected. Old timers are trying to beat me up. <laughs> Don't put him in old timers. <laughs> he no, doesn't I'm know. Old -timer now. He doesn't know what old time is. <laughs> He's retired. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris. Well, so if you, um, I got to go get a hot dog and a piece of pizza and get on a plane. I mean, can you actually bring them both back? I can't bring them both back. I'll have to send a second truck. Oh, they'll have to come back. California. Don't worry about this. Cause I'd love to keep it, but I want the digger. Mm -hmm. So now we're 54, you know that right? Cat guy? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> 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 yeah. We're 58. 58. 58. 58. Kick ass. All right. So we get to keep our 32 yeah. and we get the digger. Sean, put the 32 back on. You came here for nothing. You got to come back next week and get the digger. Sorry, Sean. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we got a deal. So make a make a date with him. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, what is today? Thursday? It's sooner sooner better than this, later next week. Yeah. yeah. And just uh, email me the wiring instructions and I'll send it to you. You have a great show. Done Thank it. you, sir. You've done a great. Now job. you're blowing footballs on. <laughs> it's, it's over. It's over with. So now, okay. If this was only worth fifty-five or sixty grand, how much is that seventy-five thousand dollar car? If I told you, I just told him. You I'm just like, told me. I've been offered two hundred thousand for that car. That was a much stronger man than me, sir. Yeah. <laughs> that was a much stronger man than me. All right, Chris. Good. All right, man. Kick ass, man. Thank hey. you very much. Thank All right, you. That car. We're gonna get it on the road. It's gonna have AC. It's gonna be cool. It's gonna do what it's got to do. You'll regret not trading one day, but that's okay. And then. The Rebel Without a Clause, I want to own that if you ever saw it. That would go into my personal collection. It's going to be more than 55 grand. Oh, I know. I'm not. I'm, I'm fine with that. I understand that. I mean, I, that's the car. I need, I need to show you the pictures. Oh, no, I saw them up there on the deal and uh, what have you. And then when you get a chance, uh, scan those interior pics and uh, send them to me. And uh, I made some copies for you. Yeah. No, I appreciate it. Kick ass, sir. Right. Right. Sir, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. We actually uh, came up here hoping to take the 32 back home. So okay, we did it well. Did. <laughs> I didn't want to give it up, but I was willing to. But now I got them both. Get you car. some of that or some of that digger. So my boy Chase is from here and he says this is the place to eat. So I prefer like, you know, a hot dog cart on the side of the street, but it's the same thing. Okay. Let's do it. Now, this place is... Are you doing a tiny beef? I'm doing the, uh, everything, man. Place, I want... Tiny beef, the hot dog, the tiny sausage. I don't you know want the, the chocolate sausage. cake shake. Hey, just let me do my thing, man. You might be from here, but I'm all about food. Uh, how you doing? I wish I mean that they can see so I can go. <laughs> I'm a good in your show. Thank you. you don't know. My husband has to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Hi, you're welcome. <laughs> so they're doing goblets of beer here, and I want to gobble some. One, two, three, four. Oh, have you seen the shells? <laughs> here, man, I can do it for you. Hi, man. <laughs> Look at how silly that is. <laughs> That's hilarious. Thank you, sir. So I got a beer. And I got some stuff that they said is supposed to be the best stuff around. Those are fries. I don't know what that is. These are still fries. And really? Uh, you just dropped a fry in my beer. Well, I paid for it. I do whatever I want to with it. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. 
straight from Chicago. How many wraps do I gotta, how many, how many licks does it take to get the, the middle of a meat stick? It's wet. <laughs> the hot dog was as good as I remember. It's been a long time since I've been to Chicago. But you get that poppy seed bun, that little pepper and piece of tomato, and some kind of crazy, weird, gooky green uh, relish stuff that you don't even know what it is. And uh, you throw a uh, all beef wiener in there. That's the shit right there. And then the beef sandwich <laughs> uh, with the hot peppers and dipped, pretty damn good. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna sleep very well on the plane on the way home. So uh, there you go. I got a little bit of my Chicago fix. Uh, I got to keep my 32 and I got the digger. Pretty damn cool. Hey, I'm trying to eat, man. So, uh, I don't even know how to explain this one, but it, it happens from time to time. You know, Chris Ito's a good friend of mine. I've known him for 20 years. Uh, he's a really cool car guy. And he called me up this morning once we got back to the house and he's really having like some hard time getting rid of the digger. Uh, and, and I get it, it's an emotional car for me. I used to own it. Uh, so I can't push him too hard, he's my friend. I can't be like, man, you made a deal, you know? And I, I you know, then I don't know if I wanna like add a little bit of money to it uh, and maybe sweeten the deal a little bit. Uh, and then there gets this point where if it's a little bit more money pushes him over the edge, well, that's more money for the project. And then I get to the end. Do I, you know, let's say it was X amount of dollars plus what it took to get it here, plus what it took to get it on the road and do the interior. Now I got 125,000 invested in a street legal dragster for two. I mean, is that a hot rod that's worth 150, 175 grand, or is it still just a 60 or 75 thousand dollar car? I really don't know. And uh, you know, then when you're dealing with your friend, it's 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 like, damn it, I don't know what you want to do. Um, so, like my friend Stale Cracker down in Louisiana says, while we wait, we hydrate. Well, while I think. I drank.